it's always a good idea before you use your jelly prints, on your especially on deli paper, before you start ripping them up, it's a good idea to scan them and use them as future backgrounds. Now when I scanned this one in, I scanned it with a piece of sheet music. I didn't even glue it down. Look, I've still got my original and I just placed it in the scanner together. So now I have my original to use. I have this one and then when you reduce it, you get this one to use as well. So from one print, you get several things that you can do. So it's always a good idea to do that before you start to work with your deli prints on other projects. Now, here's one that I've got glued down ready to use from some of the papers that I've already prepared. And I've glued it down onto the sheet music. When you trim off the excess around the outside, it's always a good idea to keep those bits. Because on my page, this is quite a dense background, so I want to break it up with some other bits on top. I'm going to use some tags and just to tie those tags in with the background, all I've done is used some of these bits off the side and added them on here and it just ties it all together. Now, first of all on here I want to create a dribble with some liquid acrylic ink and this will need a little time to dry. Now, because this is so fluid, you can actually draw with it and allow it to dribble. And that really needs to be left flat to dry because if I block that off now it's just going to take everything straight back off. I'll just have a little play first of all. Now while that's drying I've just got a sheet of um, old text here and I'm just going to hand draw some little house shapes because I just want to break up that very dense background with something a little bit lighter and this is very loose and very scribbly. I'm going to cut these out and add them Because of this light text colour, it will just break up the background a little bit. I can either place these houses right on the bottom here or I'll have to draw a little border for them to stand on. I don't want them to look like they're floating. So I'll have a look in a moment, see where I want to put them. Um, I think I actually prefer them a little bit higher up. So once this ink dribble has dried, I'm going to draw a little border for them to stand on there. Now I'm just going to work on my tags. I'm going to stamp numbers on them. I'm just going to add these with a bit of tape. Now, normally, if I was at home, I would stitch these on, but I've cheated a bit and I've stitched them first so it will look like I've stitched them to the page. I'm going to add some wording to the page. Now, I'm going to use uh, the wrong end of a paintbrush and dip in some calligraphy ink. Well, you could do this with Indian ink or Sumi ink. And in fact, you could do it with the end of a chopstick. I've seen people doing it that way. I just use a paintbrush because it's what I have to hand. And I'm writing on here, trust the mess. Because that's what I'm learning to do in my art journals. I'm learning to go with my instincts. Doesn't matter if it's messy. It's all about the layers and the process. So this is quite a different way of writing. You sometimes have to go over it more than once. You have to work the ink. I 
makes quite a nice bold statement on the page doing it this way. Now just one thing to finish off, I just want to draw a border under my houses because at the moment they're floating. And the page is finished, trust the mess.